Hi, I'm Lizzie and welcome to my channel. Now, if you're new to my channel, um, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Lizzie Edwards and I'm a personal stylist in London, in England. And I'm also the founder of Elevate, which is a style membership for women about workwear and how to look good and feel great. So this week in the video, I want to talk to you about shopping online. Um, I'm sure that if you've been buying things in this last year, you've obviously been doing it online and I would bet that you've had to send things back. Now, I think it's kind of inevitable that you'll always have to send some things back because some things you might just not like, but there are definitely some things you can do to ensure that you're less likely to have to be sending more things back than you'd like. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the five tips for online shopping success. Now, the first one is, it seems like a really basic one, but I think that I just need to re reaffirm why this is so important. The first one is to get clear. And what I mean by get clear, I mean to measure yourself and get really clear on what size you are. Because I think particularly in the last year, people have put on weight. Some people might have even lost weight if they've got fit. Um, either way, um, sometimes we can make assumptions about what size we think we are, particularly if you've been wearing much more loungewear and much more items with stretching because you've been working from home or you've just been, you know, laying low. So I really think that it's now the time to get a tape measure. If you haven't got one, please just go onto Amazon. You can just order one and to get really clear on what your measurements are. So the, the key measurements to have as an absolute basic are chest, waist and hip. Um, and if you can, or if you've got someone else to help you, you can also measure your um, arm, your leg. Um, you, uh, different brands have got different measurements, but those three are the absolute key ones. And um, the most important thing is to make sure that when you measure yourself, that the, back, the, the tape measure stays straight all the way around and is, is parallel to the floor so that it's not riding up. So just do it in front of the mirror. Um, and the other thing is the hip measurement is, is often quite confusing for people. So I want you to think about the hip as being the widest part, so the biggest part of your bum. Um, often people think it's where the hip bone is and it's not, it's much lower than that and generally speaking it's the largest part. So wherever you're widest, do it in front of the mirror and just put the tape measure around your widest part, that's your hip measurement. Now there are a few exceptions to this but generally if you go with that, that's kind of the measurement that people go with. Um, now the thing about this is to really do this with a lot of kindness to yourself. If you're somebody who has gained weight, which is, you know, the statistics are that a lot of people have put weight on over this pandemic, this is not a time to give yourself a hard time. These are just numbers on a page. These are just an awareness exercise so that when you're looking online, you can actually correlate the numbers that you've got written on that piece of paper into the particular brand's sizing. You, it, it means nothing more than that. It doesn't have any judgment on you. So I really want you to take the emotion out of this and just to see them as numbers on a page. Um, so that's the first thing is to do is to measure yourself and, and the other part of getting clear is also I've noticed increasingly some brands are asking for weight and height because they've got a computer um, algorithm thing um, that when you put in your weight and height they will tell you what size you're going to wear judging from what other people have bought so I noticed on um, the Zara website the other day they ask for height and weight and then they tell you, you put in what's what how you like something to fit and they will tell you how many people have bought which size um, and how many of them have returned it. So they've basically got an algorithm going on where they can take, they can pull all that information about fit. So it's really worth just having those two things written down as well. So um, again, this, this whole getting clear part, part it's not going to change if you ignore it. So if you have put weight on and getting on the scales feels really scary, just take a deep breath and just do it um, and try not to make it mean anything. But the better thing is, the best thing is that you're ready because one of the things is as we approach coming out of lockdown, as we approach getting back into going to the office maybe or seeing friends, what you don't want to do is, is to wait until the night before and be in denial about where you're at and what works for you and what's fitting you. So just, you know, that's why the first step is just to get clear. And as I say, do it with love, okay? Um, now, the next, number two is, in relation to that, is to know your dress size. So in terms of which brands, you want to know which dress size you are in each brand. Now, 
as you will know, is a woman who does shopping. <laughs> Every brand is a little bit different. Not hugely different, but a little bit different, and it can make a difference. So I want you to be buying things that you've got the best chance possible of not having to return them because the size isn't right. So with that in mind, I want you to make sure, as I say, you've got your size details written down, uh, the measurements of each chest, waist and hip written down so that when you're about to do any online shopping, you've got them close to hand and when you, before you put that thing in the basket, you can check on their size charts which, are the, which is the size for you um, and just to have it ready to go so that you're not, and I'm going to put my hands up, I do this, I've, I've not got my measurements in front of me, I'm, I'm in the middle of buying something and I think, oh, I know, I kind of know, I'm going to just guess it. Well, you know, that's sort of slightly shopping in the, in the dark. So what I want you to do is, if, if you're tempted to do that, just put the item in the basket and measure yourself, okay? Before you buy anything, just promise me you'll measure yourself. Um, the, third, um, the third thing is to know what you want. Now, again, this sounds a bit crazy, but a year has gone since we've been out in the real world um, and you might have changed. Your, what you need for work might have changed. The, even if you're going back into the office, I doubt you're going back into the office every day. Um, it's very unlikely. Your needs would have, would have changed. The environment will have changed. Your body's changed. Lots of things have changed. So it's really worth actually looking at your, your needs and your wants and, and really getting that clear about what you want. And that can be anything from practicalities of what you need now. You might just say, actually, I'm working from home three days a week. Um, but you want workwear that you can wear at home. And so you want stuff that's more comfortable. You want stuff that's more stretchy. Um, but I really, really think it's worth you considering your working from home wardrobe as part of your work wardrobe and not just leaving it to jogging bottoms and it doesn't really matter. Um, I really want you to think about these items as being part of your wardrobe and something that's worth investing in. Um, and the other thing that might have changed is just what you like, you know, your personal style aesthetic, your, your signature style, you just might like these different things. You know, you might have been someone who really enjoyed wearing dresses and heels and you're like, you know what, it's just not me anymore, I'm different. You know, some people have had quite big changes happen in the last year and just, just things have changed. So really think about what it is that you need and what you want. Um, number four is to, another tip for, for shopping online, is to research before you buy. Now, I know that it's tempting just to buy in front of the telly, you're just having a look, buy things. Well, it really doesn't work like that if you want to have a wardrobe that really works for you and that you're not just buying things and that sending them back. So what I want you to do is to research before you start shopping. And so with, in mind, with that in mind of what I said in the point before is, is to really think about what you need in your wardrobe before you start shopping. And then once you've got that list, to shop consciously. So if you decide that you need some new navy trousers, to start researching those navy trousers and knowing what size you are in different brands and, and holding those together. Now, I want to share a tool with you that I use when I'm shopping um, for my clients virtually and also that I use in my Elevate membership to give shoppable boards to, to the members. Um, and it's, a, it's um, a, a software called Moon Sift. And that's moon as in the moon and sift as in as if you're sifting flour. And I'll put the link in the description here. Now, what, what it's a new tool, it's a relatively new tool and it's brilliant. And I will be doing a video, just a walkthrough video to give a little bit more explanation. But basically, it's like Pinterest, but it's not Pinterest. So it's not got all of the noise of Pinterest, but what it's absolutely brilliant for is to use as a holding pen for things that you found. Now, I'll give you a bit of an overview of what it is. So basically, you sign up for the platform and you go into Google Chrome and they've got a list of every retailer and brand you can possibly think of. And that's because when you think of a brand that you want to shop and they don't have it, you can just request it. So they've gradually built up all of that. And you can also add manually. But what it means that, for example, I'm gonna just use an example. If you've decided that you want a trench coat this season, and you think, right, I'm going to go and look in John Lewis. You don't just go to John Lewis website. You go into Moonsif first and you go through the John Lewis website. And then what you do is you, a bit like with Pinterest, where you can pin it, you do that. So you can say, oh, I like that trench coat, pin it. And you, you basically Moonsift it. And what you do is you can have a board in Moonsift that you just call trench coats and you can save them on there. So you might then go and have a look at the Burberry ones and put that in there. And what it means is that you can then go onto your Moonsift site and you'll have a board with all of your trench coats that you found from all the different brands. And you can be doing this over the space of a couple of weeks. 
and you can see all of your trench coats in one place. They've got the price on there, where it's from, the link to the site, and you can make notes, and you can also, it, it tells you if there's been a price drop. So it's a really good place to just put everything that you like. And you could have a board for red shoes, you could have a board for, you know, literally anything. You can have a board for anything. And then what you can do is you can actually, once you've built up these different boards, you can then sub pin so that you could actually start saying, oh, I've bought that one and put that over there. And you can start putting things together like that. And that's just a real overview, but it's really worth looking into because I really think it's a really great way of researching and planning what you're buying and really seeing what's out there before you make any purchases. And sometimes it's just useful to see everything in one place, side by side, just to see everything and go, actually, no, I, I like that one. And actually that one's much more expensive and you can really see everything. So I really, really urge you to research before you shop because the more research you do the less likely is that you're going to make snap decisions and end up having to send stuff back uh, and the final tip I've got for you number five is to know your budget you know really think about what it is that you want to want to buy and what you've got to invest in it and again I'm going to be talking here about workwear if we're going back to work and you've got to get some new items together just to have a refresh of your wardrobe, really think, you know, have you got £500 to spend or have you got £5,000 to spend? You know, really think about what you've got to spend. And then when you've done your list about what you need, which was obviously tip number three, um, you can then actually see where, where that is best spent and see where to budget and see where to spend the money. And it just really will help you to make it a conscious decision that you're actually buying some things that are new and to invest in them and you can see where to spend that money. I think too many people just think, oh, I'm gonna buy some new things and they don't really give it any thought. Because again, what I really urge you to do is not just to buy stuff for the sake of it, but to also buy really the good quality that you can possibly afford. And that doesn't mean expensive. And people often say, when I'm talking about quality, I'm not talking about designer clothes, I'm talking about quality clothes. And that means, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not shopping on the high street, but you're really consciously deciding if you need a new jacket, you know, where can you invest that? Have you only got one enough money for a £70 one in Zara or do you have one for a £200 one in theory? You know, it's just having a think about where you want to spend your money. So those are my top um, five tips for online shopping. I'm going to go through them one more time. So the first one is to get clear. The second one is to know your dress size. The third one is to know what you want. Uh, number four is to do your research first. And number five is to know your budget. Now, I hope you found that useful. You'll see in my video library, there's quite a few different um, videos on different things that I've touched. And also, you'll find that if, you, if this is a subject that interests you as well, um, my book, Look Like the Leader You Are, goes into detail on how to go through some of these steps. Um, and finally, I want to also tell you about um, a download that I've created, which really addresses these things. Um, it's available if you click the link below in the description. What I've done is I realised that a lot of people find it hard um, when they're shopping online. All the brands are different. So I've put together, I've compiled um, a, a download of, with a size chart of all of my favourite workwear brands that I go to. And what that means is that once you've measured yourself, you've got a really quick reference guide so you can just see where you lie in all of the different brands that I recommend for workwear. So I hope you find that useful. I had really, you know, it's really interesting putting it together because I got to see how different the brands were and why people struggle so much getting online shopping success. So I hope you find that useful. Please do remember to subscribe and um, I will be sending out a new video next Thursday. Thanks so much for watching.